Hey guys, welcome to the podcast today. We have a fun guest. I haven't had a guest for a while and I went all out on this one, you guys. She is coming to us live from South Africa, which is super exciting. And I think you're going to love her accent because I know I do. <laughs> so, so Brittany, welcome. Thank you so much for having me. You're welcome. So I'm going to read your bio. I have to take my glasses off to read your bio because it's on my phone. So you guys, let me tell you about this amazing woman. Brittany McCormick is a South African motivational speaker all the way from Johannesburg. Did I say Johannesburg, right? Yes, you did. I did? Oh, good. All right. <laughs> Brittany was born with cerebral palsy. Her goal is to encourage others to believe that what seems impossible can be possible. She aims to improve lives through teaching others to defeat the odds and overcome challenges. Brittany wants to help build programs for the educational and corporate sectors so they can help improve the lives of others with disabilities and help them live their true purpose. Brittany has had many accomplishments. She was chosen to speak to the wellness team at Dimension Data South Africa. She was woman of the month for the Justice League Organization of South Africa, which organizes virtual races in order to support feeding disadvantaged children in the community. Brittany raced in those races to honor the 17 million people in South Africa living with disabilities. She has also swum the island swim. You'll have to tell us about that in a minute. Been interviewed by South African radio stations and has had various articles written about her. Brittany McCormick aims to not only be South Africa's top motivational speaker, but also an impactful member of the international motivational speaking community. That's a great bio, Brittany. I love it. Thank you. Thank you. So before we go anywhere else, please tell me what is the swim thing? <laughs> what is that? So growing up, I always, I've wanted to be a like a, a swimmer and take part in a race, mm -hmm. and um, and so that happened. And obviously, I had to do it with assistance. I had a life jacket on, and mm -hmm. I had a swimming coach by my side. But I, I I climbed into a dam and I swam. I think it was something like five hundred meters or six hundred meters, and yeah, that was called the island swim. It was almost like a fun race that people could do and that's what I did. It was called the Island Swim. That is awesome. Good job. That sounds really Thank fun. Thank you. It was a long time ago but I still did it. Good job. That's I know that's good. I'm really glad you celebrate your wins because yes. you know as a manifesting coach I always teach people whatever you focus on grows. So when you celebrate your wins no matter how old they are you're focusing on wins, which means you yes, will attract yes. more wins into your life. So you are a motivational speaker and how old are you? I'm 24. 24 year old motivational speaker. I know so many people that want to be motivational speakers who are much older than that and have not achieved it yet, you know, due to circumstances in their life, or fears or all kinds of, you know, blocks and things like that. So I would love to hear how at your young age, you were already a motivational speaker. Tell us the story of that. So I have always known since a very young age that I wanted to encourage and uplift people. And at the age of 18, I got an opportunity via Dimension Data through somebody that I know um, to go and speak at the company and ever since then the bug bit and I just knew that this is what I'm going to do for the rest of my life and in that moment that was when I knew my life's purpose was to be a motivational speaker I knew God had planned that for me in order for me to encourage and uplift others and um, I've only been a motivational speaker full-time for three months and more but 
Um, I'm really loving it. And it's, it's not something that has come overnight, but it, it's coming slowly. You know, one step at a time creates the biggest milestones. And understanding that even though it's a small step, it's still a step. And it doesn't matter how long it takes you, the end result will still be the same. And it's that that you have to look at when wanting to achieve your goals and succeed in things. That's awesome. So I would love to hear about your first time speaking. Did you call it dimension data? Yes. Is that, I've never heard of that. That's probably a, like a South African company. Yes. Are they pretty yes. big? Yes. Um, parts of them do go all over the country and, and all of that. I spoke to um, the wellness section. I spoke to Vodacom and um, MT, uh, Vodacom and Cape Town and um, I think South Sea. Wow. Yeah. So those, different times or they were all gathered together? Um, parts of them were virtual and parts of them were oh. in person. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So were you live there or were you virtual? No, no, it was in person. It was? Oh, that's exciting. But it was almost like an, an interview approach. So yeah. the, somebody was chatting to me and then I was responding. Um, yeah, so it was almost like a motivational interview sort of vibe. Oh, I love that. That sounds really interesting. Yeah. yeah. So tell us, how did you feel before you went out on that stage for the first time? Um, I was a ball of nerves, to be honest. I had butterflies in my stomach. Um, I barely yeah. slept that night. So I, <laughs> I took I took four and a half hours just to get ready. Oh my gosh. Because <laughs> I was so nervous. But um, yeah, it, it, it was awesome. It was such a blessing. And I'd love to be able to do it again for them. Uh, I love that fear. That fear right before you step out on stage, I think is is the best fear of all. Because it's excitement and you know, promise and all the things that you're going to do while you're on the stage and the lives you're going to change. And I love it. That's my favorite fear of all. It's pre-stage fear. The response was unbelievable. Oh. Um, grown women and grown men were actually crying and you, they were sitting there just sobbing their eyes out. Oh my gosh. What? Like they were... I promise you, they were wiping their tears. Like, you know, when you're crying so much that it runs down your chin <laughs> and onto your shirt. Yeah, yeah like, oh the, the, yeah, they, they were crying quite, quite, quite a bit. That's amazing. Yeah. So you, you don't know me that well yet, but I will tell you something I tell all my audiences when I speak. And that is, if I make you cry, then I know this was a good presentation. If you yes. cry, I win. <laughs> yes, yes. So that I means you funny. Yes, you won. <laughs> yes. No, it, it was just awesome. Oh, that is so good. I hope they all brought tissues with them. <laughs> funny thing <laughs> is, I didn't have any. Oh, no. Oh, that's right. <laughs> Oh, I think as a speaker, maybe we should make sure that there are tissues when we come to speak. I might, I might start putting that on my pre-presentation checklist. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. So tell me what happened afterwards. Did you, um, did you meet with the people? Did they come and talk to you or did you, or were you like escorted away no, no. Um, people came to talk to me, took photos with me, shook my hand, gave me a hug. Obviously, it was bef way before COVID. I mean, it was in 2018, 2019, yeah. um, 2018. And yeah, it was just, a, it was awesome. I, I will always remember that moment. And you know, when you know that this is it, you know, yes. pe people can say what they want to say, but you know in your heart that that's it. And um, after, after doing that talk, um, I actually went on and studied web design. 
Um, and then I really wanted to follow my true passion, um, motivational speaking. And um, so I did that. I took part in a course and I did that. And I've been a part of that course for quite a while now and I've been enjoying it. I've just finished off. And yeah, it's been a big journey. I've spoken in front of 300 plus countries. I've spoken in front of 159 countries. Um, in the next couple of weeks, I'll be speaking in, a, in front of 150, 115,000 audience members virtually. So Jeez. yeah, it's wow. happening quickly. That is amazing. When we manifest something, we can either manifest things that we don't want because we're scared of them, which is the worst kind of manifesting, or we can manifest on purpose a goal that we want. So um, I, what I want to know is what did you do specifically to make your goal of being a motivational speaker happen, to actually get invited to speak somewhere? So what it actually is, is just being confident about it and not being fearful of had some, having somebody say no to you, but also having faith in that answer and, and having a positive outlook. You know, having a positive outlook equals a positive result. You know, everybody says, oh, but if I, if I, if I do this, what if they say no? There's nothing wrong with a no. It doesn't mean you don't know what you're doing or you can't do it. It just means you need to find another way to do it. You know, and there's hundreds of people that are going to say, mm, I'm not sure, maybe, okay. Yeah, I don't know. But when mm -hmm. it comes to that, you need to look at it and say, well, okay, if the answer is no, I understand. If the answer is yes, amazing. What are the steps forward? How do we take control? You know, what do we do? And it's up to you to decide, is this really what I want? And if it is, you need to go for it. And you need to not allow the effects of others to affect the result. Because if you allow it to affect the result, you're not going to achieve it. You know, you have a decision. You can be a positive outlook or a negative outlook you can be that person that says you know what you can do this you have this you've got it you're powerful you're incredible or you can be that person that says no 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 and instead of being that person that says no be that person that says you know what it's okay it's going to take time but i'll get there i don't know how i'm going to get there but i'll get there through faith and through understanding i'll get there that is a great attitude. I love it. You have a really good positive outlook on things. And I believe that we have so much more control over what happens around us than we realize. And I like that about you. You take control. You don't let things just slip by. You reach out and grab them and say, okay, we're going to do this. This is what I want. So that's what I it might not be easy and, and it, it took me a very long time to be able to do this. And um, through the help of my mentor, he's taught me not, he's taught me the ways of how to do it, but I've always known I could do it. I just needed somebody to show me the ways of how to, you know, yeah. and, and um, I'm very grateful to my mentor for his help and all the, the care and the love that he gives. Um, I mean, he's, he's an incredible person. And I'll always be thankful for what he's done and will continue to do during my journey with him yeah. and um, with motivational speaking because I know that he's proud of me and I know that he will support me in every way and in everything that I do. That's amazing. Mentors are so important. And finding the right mentor is so important. But it's, it's, not, about, it's not about the, the correct mentor because nobody's perfect. But it's about seeing what works for you, you know, and, and seeing, okay, well, what can this person teach me, you know, even with their own flaws and with their own things. It's, it's about understanding that each person has value to add and what and what and how are you going to see that value? Right. 
Very wise. So I would love to um, hear about your presentation that you give. So you, you teach people how to focus on seeing the ability, not the disability. Yes. And so I would, how do you teach people that? How do you inspire them to see the ability, not the disability? So I share my life story and what I've actually been through. Um, because let's be honest, everybody's disability story or story is drastically different. You get disabilities that are drastic and some can't speak, some can't talk, some can't move, some can't do much. But I aim to help you see that even if it's so, even if it's something so, so small, it's still an ability. I believe that even if you're just capable of making a cup of tea or a cup of coffee or making somebody smile, that's an ability. That's an mm. ability. Don't, don't discount that. It might be small to somebody else, but it's, it's big to the other person. Don't discount it. I love that. We do so often as humans, I think, and especially women, we tend to look at our faults and ignore the amazing things about ourselves just kind of by default. And so <clears throat> I feel like it does take conscious effort to focus on the good and the positive. So I love that you're out teaching that, that you're teaching that to people. And some, you know, you've, you've got a, a kind of major disability, cerebral palsy, um, Tell us a little about how that affects you and, the, and, and how it doesn't affect you. So there's different levels of cerebral palsy. I'm not, I'm not educated in this um, or qualified in this to speak much about it. But okay. from, from my experience and my, my condition, mine is of that of a, a stroke patient. Um, okay. So it does affect my body the right side of my body so the left side of my body i'm capable to move but the right side of my body um was drastically affected mm. okay yeah. so um can you walk i can walk with assistance and i've just learned to walk on a treadmill um mm. but most of the time i'm on my hands and knees oh, wow. i have a I have a club foot and my knees bend in, but we're currently working on that with a bike kinesthetist to, um, to make that less drastic and just make my movements a whole lot better and a whole lot easier for myself. That's amazing. And, you know, some people would let that stop them. And, it, you know, they would let that be an excuse I've got this really good excuse here to not follow my dreams. So I'm just going to sit here in my comfort zone and not do anything. But you don't, you don't do that. You, you push out of your comfort zone and you push past your obstacles. Where did you get that strength? My parents raised me to be as independent as I could be and raised me to believe, raised me to see my my independence and who I could be and what I can be. You know, my parents gave me chores to do and I learned to dress myself at the age of six. I, I, I don't live a complete, complete independent life, but most things I can do on my own. The only thing I can't do is cook and tie my shoelaces. Oh, okay. That's really good. That's about it. Yeah. Um, and yes, there's certain things that I need help with, but I'm, I've been brought up to push to do it on my own. And if I can't do it, then I will ask you for help. Mm. Um, and I've, I've always known that, okay, I might, be diff I might be disabled, but I have a choice. Do I wallow in it or do I uplift in it? Oh, I'm like, I love that. Do I wallow in it or do I uplift in it? That's awesome. That's a good question. We could all ask ourselves that question every day with our own trials. That's amazing. 
And I am, I believe that many people that are average people that don't have disabilities actually have disabilities. Because if you tell yourself, I can't do this, you're actually placing a disability on yourself. And instead of saying, you know what, I struggle at the moment, but I will get there. I will yeah. get there. It might take me 10 steps back first before it takes me 10 steps forward to get to those 10 steps ahead. Mm. It doesn't matter. Everybody's journey is different and everybody's journey has um, things that they face. You know, you, you can't run away from the challenges. You can either accept them or let them pull you down. And yeah. I cho- and I chose and still choose to see my own abilities and, and and choose to actually accept my challenges and say, you know what, can I do this? If not, okay, let's find another way to do it. That's great. That is such a good attitude. I love that. We would all do well to have that kind of an attitude. So we're going to take a little break and we will be back. So don't go anywhere. Stay tuned. And we'll be back with Brittany McCormick, motivational speaker from South Africa. Hey, we are back. Thanks for sticking around. Um, We are with Brittany McCormick today, a South African motivational speaker. And during the break, you guys missed it, but we talked about chocolate (laughs) and South African snacks. So I I have an Amazon order to make after I'm done with this podcast. (laughs) Talk about making an impact. (laughs) Spreading the chocolate around the world. <laughs> yeah, why not? <laughs> oh, that was awesome. Okay, so we we've we've gotten to know you. We've heard about how you became a speaker, and you know how you focus on the positive. I would love now to hear your life story because I haven't heard it, and I know that's one of the things you share when you speak. So, would you be willing to share some of your life story with us? Perfect, no problem. Awesome. Um, I was born at 25 weeks premature. Um, I weighed a, the size of a, a slab of butter. And <laughs> wow. um, I was in hospital for three months. Um, and at times I had a, f- a few blood transfusions. Only later on, as I developed more, that they discovered that I had cerebral palsy quadriplegia of high muscle tone. Um, I'm not fully educated, but I choose to live a successful and and a and a life filled with goals being achieved, one step at a time. Um, and I have I have the ability to walk with assistance, but. I mainly crawl on my hands and knees. When I go out in public, I use a wheelchair. Um, And growing up, I've always believed that you can be of value to somebody, no matter what your condition is. Um, And I've always found it important to give somebody a compliment or tell them they look beautiful or make them smile because you don't know if that can change the life. Just recently, I discovered the meaning of being the person you wish you had. And what does this mean? This means the simple things. This is not the complicated things. This is not things that can be bought, but it's the meaningful things that matter. And throughout my life, I I was bullied and spoken down to and all of that. And I had to learn to understand that it's because they don't understand and it's because they don't know. And it's not because of you or what your condition is. It's just because they really don't understand. And I have a very loving and supportive family and they support me in everything that I do. And um, I've just recently learned, just over a year ago, to walk on the treadmill. I walked two and a half kilometers um, in a race. I walked in honor of people with disabilities and I just live try to live my best life with faith and love and hope and 
that what more could you ask for? That's amazing. I love that you have a good supportive family. That makes such a big difference. And it sounds like your parents have been really smart in fostering independence in you. That, that I mean, that is a huge blessing that they, they didn't baby you. They helped you actually develop real life skills and to be independent and do things on your own. So that's really amazing. You, you were blessed with good parents too. I love that. I mean, they always encouraged me and they said, it never has to be perfect so long as you can do it. Um, and they've taught me just to be as independent as I can be with what I can manage. And with what I can't manage, it's okay to ask for help. There's no shame in being disabled. There's no shame in saying, listen, I need help. Can you help me? Right? That's there, good. There's no shame in it. There's not. And I, you know, I don't know why so many people have trouble asking for help. I think they, it, it feels like you're saying I'm weak. I'm, I'm failing. I'm weak. Will you help me? But really it's not. I think it's actually but, brave and smart to ask for help. But in reality, you're actually being weak by not asking for help. Right. It's true. You're being scared. That's really so, true. So be that voice. You know, even if it's scary, even if it's, even if you're not sure, just open up and say, oh, no, I want to do this. I want to live a dream. I want to love my purpose. What can I do? How can I make a difference? How can I help you see your own abilities and help see your own abilities and say, you know what? Yes, you may have this disability, but what are you good at? You know? And if you, and, and, and yes, you may have a condition or, or whatever the case may be, but if you know you're capable, then do it. Agreed. What do you think would be the most helpful piece of advice you could give someone who is struggling with seeing their ability? There is perfection within imperfection. Oh, I love that. Say it again. There is perfection within imperfection. Oh. And if I can just explain that, it's... Yeah. It's understanding that you are imperfect, but you have perfections within you. You have beauties within you. Yes, you might only be able to run or walk 500 meters, but you're still walking. You might only be able to get up and walk to the toilet, or you might only be able to do so much, but at least you're doing it. See your perfections and not your imperfections. Understand that there's perfection perfection within imperfection nothing in life is perfect and when you understand that you will understand that there is success within failure i love that and you know what i think that there there is really no failure except the failure to try because even if you try and don't reach your goal you've still succeeded because you've learned You've learned what doesn't work. You've gotten practice at going for your goal. Exactly. It's still a win. It might not be the objective you wanted, but it's still a win. So really the only way to fail is to not even try. That's the only failure, yes. I think. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I agree with you. Thank you. All right, so let's talk about your upcoming plans and events. What's, what is on the horizon for Brittany? So there's one or two things that are on, that's on the horizon. I'm speaking for um, YIS, Young International Youth Summit, um, in the next couple of weeks. And that's in front of quite a wide audience. And then in August, I'm speaking for a organization in the Cape called Sabrina Love. They are an organization that support disabled children that go to disabled schools. 
and then I will also be speaking at a disabled school um, in, the, in the Cape, of course. Um, both of these talks will take place in the Cape. And yeah, it's, that's what's coming up next. That's exciting. I love that the, the virtual speaking world has come to be so popular and so accessible. And you can reach such a wider audience now. You, you're reaching people yes. in countries all over the world because of virtual speaking. So if somebody wanted to have you speak at their virtual event, how would they get a hold of you? So there are a few ways you can get a hold of me. I have Instagram, which is Brittany Jade McCormick with no K and just two Cs. Then I have LinkedIn, which is Brittany McCormick. I have a website that is bemotivated.ca.za, but instead of A, it's an eight um, before the D, and that's how they can get hold of me. Awesome. And oh. Facebook as well. They, oh, yeah. can, they can contact me on Facebook and I will get back to them as soon as I can. Perfect. And I, I will put all of your links into the show notes. So if you're listening to this and you didn't get her links, um, just go and open up the show notes for this episode. And I will drop all of those links in there so that you can get a hold of her. Also, you have a blog where you basically document your journey. And I think yes. people would probably be really interested in that. So I'll put the blog link in there too. For you. If you go onto my website at the bottom, you'll see my, that's where my blog is. Oh, perfect. And it's motivated, but the letter A is a... Perfect. Be motivated, but the A is an eight, right? That's cute. Be yes, motivated. next to the D. And then it's .co.za. Yeah. .co.za. Okay, awesome. Perfect. Um, do you have any last words of wisdom for my listeners? My last words of wisdom mm -hmm. would be the smallest steps create the biggest milestones. Don't underestimate the smallest steps you take. See the value in them, accept them, understand them and move forward with them. And see your own abilities. Doesn't matter, the small or big, doesn't matter. It's an ability. Learn to love it then to understand it and then to accept it and work with it. Awesome. Those are very good words of wisdom. You are wise beyond your years, which is awesome. Thank you so much for being with us today. I loved learning your story and hearing all your um, amazing accomplishments and, you know, just going after your dreams. I, everybody needs to go after their dreams. So I love meeting people who are doing that, just like I am. I want everyone to do it. I want the whole world to go get their dreams, make stuff happen, be brave, be bold. So thank you for being such a good example. And thank you for being on my podcast today. You're amazing. And um, everybody go check out Brittany's links in the show notes and um Follow her on all of her social media. And if you need a speaker for your event, Brittany is your girl. <laughs> thank you so much for having me. And thank you so much for listening to my stories. Ladies and gentlemen, it was an honor to help you see your abilities and help you overcome the odds and the challenges that you face. All right. Thank you so much. You guys, this has been... An interview with Brittany McCormick, motivational speaker from South Africa. Thank you for listening to my podcast today. And I will talk to you all again soon. 
Bye.